My daughter died from fentanyl toxicity Mother's Day this year, May 14th, 2023. Her nickname was Gigi, so I call her Gigi. Um, she graduated high school at 16, and she was a full-time barber college student. And the Friday before she passed, she had just finished all her barber school hours. Um, Saturday, she decided that she was going to celebrate, and somebody gave her a pill. Gigi was first in line for perseverance, that no matter how cruel the world was to her, she always found a way to overcome. Uh, elementary school, she always got the Perseverance Awards. Um, she struggled, but she always found a way to just rise above. I mean, she taught me sometimes to rise above. She was amazing. Her personality was out of this world. Like, there's nobody else on the planet like her. 90% of the stories that I get from her friends, from our family, are things that Gigi did. You know, she just had this way where you could be sad, you could be depressed, and she's going to pick you up. Um, I think that was part of her, um, one of her downfalls, is she internalized people's other people's emotions. She, she empathized a lot. She was just a good soul. I think when she was taking the pills that it took away from that because she became very guarded. She did not want to socialize and, and do the things that she did. She started going to school for three hours a day instead of five or six, you know. And I think she saw she was lagging behind on her goals and she made that change on her own. During the pandemic, the, you know, everything was online. No, there was no more. She went from in-person instruction to following along, you know, in a class, but not having the one-on-one -on -one opportunities. She just could not learn that way. So she decided to go to online school, which she worked at her pace, and there was no deadlines. So it was a lot easier for her to do it on her terms. So in November of 2022, um, I was on vacation, and she called me, and she told me, Mom, I've been taking Percocets, and I don't want to do this anymore. And I was unable to get to her. So my husband actually took her to the emergency room, and they gave her some pills to help with withdrawal symptoms. Um, she didn't want to do therapy. Um, she had a mentor that she spoke with. Um, from my knowledge, she had not taken a pill until the day that she died, from November to May, because she didn't want to. I think she understood that it was getting in the way of her goals. Gigi was an amazing barber. She loved being a barber. She had clients all the time. We have other children in the home, four young boys, and she was able to practice a lot. So she perfected her skill. And um, she excelled. And I think she saw that the pills she was taking were interfering with, you know, her dreams. Her dream was to open up a shop and have somebody do girl hair while she did barber hair. And these are things that she just really could not do while taking those pills. Mother's Day morning, I woke up at about 10 o'clock. And she had had some friends and cousins spend the night. And I was sitting at the table, and I was in my feelings. Uh, my mom died about five years ago, so being, it being Mother's Day, I was very sad. Um, I had not received Mother's Day calls, texts, visits, breakfasts, or anything from my children, so it just kind of added to the funk I was in. Um, at about 2.30, 3 o'clock, one of her cousins comes downstairs and says, uh, Gigi's still asleep, and she won't get up. 
And I was all like, well, tell her I said to get up because it's about time she comes down here and tells me Happy Mother's Day. And um, they came back and told me she wasn't moving. She wouldn't get up. And I went upstairs. And I found her. When I went up there, I went into the room and I called her name. She didn't move, and when I touched her, she was freezing cold. And when I went to go touch her, to move her, she was solid. Um, the medical examiner said she probably died at about 8 o'clock that morning. I was going to try to do CPR on her, and she was solid. I couldn't move her. She was asleep on her stomach. And so when I was, I couldn't roll her over. The cops came. Um, they made everybody get out and they looked around her room. They asked me for permission to look through her room and everything, and they did. And they said they found a bag with powder in it and they assumed that it was fentanyl poisoning. and that they would have to do a toxicology report to know for sure. The detective never even came back after that day, never called me, nothing. Never asked me for access to her cell phone. And they did process my house. They were in there for about five hours looking. Um, they did find the little bag, said that there was a powder residue on it. I, I know that she had been clean from pills for for a long time already. There had been months. And you uh, you could tell the change. You could see the change. You know, she was going to school from sunup to sundown because she was determined. Um, she finished her hours Friday. She had just got her driver's license that Tuesday. She felt accomplished. And I don't know what she was thinking or what would have made her or influenced her to take another pill, to risk going back to the state of mind she was in before. Um, the only pills I ever know, knew about her taking were Percocet. So it's possible somebody gave her Percocet or told her that it was Percocet. I understand that my daughter made a choice. She took a pill and it was a fatal choice. But this fentanyl stuff has to stop. I don't know where my thought processes go. I know I have other children. I have grandchildren. I have a husband um, and they need tending to. I need to keep going for them. But I miss my baby a lot. Um, and I just keep thinking that, you know, let karma get him, that it's not my fight. Something's telling me to get involved, to do something, to be an example. And maybe somebody will hear me. And then I don't know. Maybe it'll ease my heart to save one, one mom from having to go through this. That's something she would do. <laughs> she was 18 years old. And over 500 people came to her funeral service. 200 people watched it online. It's still online. She touched a lot of people. I know since she has passed that um, three people have gone through withdrawals and stopped taking any kind of drugs. Two have gone back to school. I guess my 
biggest thing here is this was not intentional. And there's lots of people out there that take pills without intention. You know, let's turn up today. Let's party today, not knowing what the consequences are. The, the popping pills from random people need to stop. Popping pills from your friends at this point needs to stop. The pills need to stop. <laughs>